Hi. Um, I'm going to show you something. Uh, many Sunni Muslims believe that uh, uh, Muhammad took a flying donkey-like creature flight in a journey by night from uh, the Alax from the uh, from Mecca, the Meccan uh, Kaaba, to the Al Aqsa in Jerusalem, and uh, not only visited the, the Temple of Solomon and the Al Aqsa Mosque, uh, but then flew that thing up into uh, uh, heaven to talk all the way down from uh, 50 prayers a day to the current five. After listening to Musa, not Moses, Moses said, You know, if you, uh, yeah. You're not going to be able to, to pay, pray 50 times a day. Then he got it down to 40. Then, uh, this, no, no, that's too high. Then Muhammad said, okay. Then he flew up there again and then got it down to 30, and then then 20, then 10. Then finally, so then, then uh, Muhammad said, oh, I'm too embarrassed to go up there and ask him for getting it down after 50, uh, after five. So he kept it at five. You know, five prayers. You know. <laughs> I bet there's some of you wishing that he uh, got it down to like five prayers uh, a year, you know what I mean? But anyway, of course there is a hadith that says uh, Muhammad has says uh, seeking knowledge for one hour is better than uh, praying for 70 years. So, yeah, of course, I know that Muslims never talk about that. But anyway, I went on the internet to look for the hoof print because to me, if they found that hoof print, it would be like the Shroud of Turin, you know? If it was a real, honest-to-God hoof print, you know? And I guess what? I couldn't find it. But I did find an aerial down from from the top of the bone down onto the rock. You know, the actual dome of the rock rock, I guess you could say. And I'm going to show it to you and see if you can find the hoof print. Because I thought they at least have a sign pointing to it, you know? I looked. Where is that hoof print? So maybe they'd show the same picture of the rock I'm going to show you with a with a sign pointing to it. Because to me, if it was the real actual hoof print of Muhammad's flying donkey-like creature with the, the head of a human and the tail of peacock, it would be the new Shroud of Turin. But anyway, I'm going to show it to you here and see what you think here. Okay. Yeah, here it is. By the way, I can't really see this very well because I dropped my camera and it whited it out so i just see just little hints of of shadow and i know that this is a a hole in the ground that was dug in another one as you can tell the play as you can tell this rock that rock is able to be chiseled it's able because you'll see a lot of chiseling that took place in it you know this is chiseled in this is chiseled in here looks like someone's trying to chisel in a ancient uh, i don't know maybe uh refrigerator I don't know this is chiseled 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 so so the thing can be chiseled if they wanted to chisel in a hoof print they definitely could so I'm gonna look for a hoof print and see if they actually chiseled in a hoof print here so looks like they chiseled in a, a footprint of a human but a footprint is not a hoof print so that you can keep that up this looks like a, a, a chiseled giant footprint like a big foot footprint and yeah, let's see here there's a hole here, hole here. This looks like something was chiseled here. Chiseled. Um, looks like a face is chiseled in there. Hey, maybe that's a footprint. Looks kind of like a ghost, you know. Two eyes and a mouth, you know. This looks like it could, looks like a, I don't know, like a footprint of some sort. So, anyway, take a look at th that and see if you can spot a footprint. I don't know why they don't have any uh, any arrows pointing to uh, a footprint here, but yeah. So take a good look at that and see if you can find a footprint, or I mean a hoofprint, a hoofprint, not a footprint. Yeah, a, a hoofprint of that uh, psychedelic-looking creature. Psychedelic. I'd say it would have to be psychedelic. Yeah. But anyway. You know, there may not even be, be a hoof print out there because I discovered on the on the internet also that Aisha said that Muhammad never left her side. 
and that it was a vision. I'll even read it to you here. I'll even read it to you here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The interpretation of this ayat verse is found first and foremost in the biography of Muhammad written by Muhammad ibn Ishaq from 767 to 1400 years after the death of Mo, after the Muhammad. In the book Sirat Razul Allah, uh, Gilliam section 265, page, page 183, which informs us with great honesty on the authority of his wife Aisha that his body never left her side and that he was only transported spiritually. This is collaborate this is corroborated by the Karyum Library Manuscript in Fez, Morocco, where it repeats that even as Shak relates on the authority of Aisha, the Prophet's wife, that most intim the mo and most intimate companion of his latter years, who declared emphatically that quote he was transported in his spirit, be ruhihi, uh, while his body did not leave its place. I see Tabari, Zamak, Shari, Sheri, and Ibn Kathir in their commentaries on seventeen on on Quran Surah seventeen one. The great Al Hasan al Brasri, who belonged to the great to the next generation, held uncompromising to the same view. In another version, in section two sixty seven, page one hundred eighty four, in it it is Hind. Um Hani D of Abu Talib that relates concerning the night journey. Quote, the apostle went on no night journey except while he was in my house. He slept that night in my house. He prayed the final pr uh, night prayer and he slept and he slept there. Some traditions assert that this may have been a spirit spiritual ascent as affirmed by Al-Bakari Sahih uh, Sahih 5 hundred uh, five two hundred and twenty five nearby Ibn by Ibn Abbas regarding the statement of Allah. Okay. Quote and we granted the vision ascension to the heaven ascension to the heavens which we made you see as an actual eyewitness was only made as a trial for the people seventeen sixteen. So anyway, maybe that's why there's no hoof print to be seen. You know, it's just a vision, or maybe Muhammad was just saying stuff off the top of the head, off the top of his head. He did say that Satan sleeps in the upper interior of your nose, and it takes three washings in the morning to get Satan out of your nose. You know, even though if Satan is sleeping in your nose, he doesn't interfere with your sense of smell, and um, yeah, I, I mean, if, if Satan is sleeping in my nose. He doesn't do much uh, to show that there's a problem. And supposedly, according to Muhammad, uh, Satan farts every time he hears the azan. And if, so if Satan is ubiquitous enough to sleep, sleep in all of our noses at the same time in the nighttime, that means Satan's farting your nose every hour because every hour on the hour, 24 hours a day, Muslims are bowing down and hearing the call, the call to prayer. So, yeah. So why wash Satan out of your nose? You know, why wash these times to get Satan out of your nose? I smell perfectly and I breathe perfectly through my nose, whether Satan's sleeping up there or not. If, you know, if he is sleeping up in my nose, he's not causing any problem and he can watch TV up in my nose too if he wants to. That's all I can say. So anyway, just something to think about. Bye.